right, welcome to another episode of Horror Face Off. Today we have It Follows versus X, and we have a new person on the panel today, Anya Gore. How's it going, Anya? Hi, I'm okay. Like you, I'm coming off of being sick. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're fighting it. We're doing uh we're doing our part to shake it. Where are you from? I am from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Canadian, John. Two Canadians. I know. Oh, John, you're Canadian too. No, no. I am. Oh, oh, you're Canadian. Oh. Where, where are you? Toronto. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. John's getting his first taste of like Vancouver versus Toronto kind of thing. He's, <laughs> yeah. he, I've been to Toronto. Have you been to Vancouver? No. Ooh. But, but okay. I'm sheltered. I, I haven't done much. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll we'll definitely talk. It's nice to have a, a Canadian, although. Uh, again, a little bit of background, John, um, West Coast, and I wouldn't say Toronto's East Coast, but Easter, <laughs> um, you know, there's a little bit of friction mm-hmm. there. There's mm-hmm. a little bit of competitive rivalry, which is all good. <laughs> John, welcome yes. to the show again. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. And you are again from where? I am in uh, Ohio, so we live in the U.S. Awesome. I've been to Ohio. <laughs> I've been to Toronto. <laughs> So it's just, I've been, been to Ohio too. <laughs> oh, so you've, you've been everywhere. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. So it's getting competitive already, as you can see. So, um, all right. So everybody knows the format by now. We're just going to get right into it and we're going to start off with plot and we're going to throw to John since he's a seasoned veteran on his second episode. Take it, John. All right. So yeah, for comparison, kind of story and plot, which you know, can be two separate things. I did go with it follows. Um, it's a very it's it's much more of an idea and it's a little bit more abstract but I think that that's what kind of gave it the edge to me I think it's a sort of clever uh, plot clever story Um, whereas x which is very cool I think it's a very straightforward kind of specific story that the story in and of itself isn't I don't think what makes it special awesome short and sweet and we're gonna throw to you Anya your first uh first take I'm going with It Follows as well. Well, X, I loved the twist that they did with it and the direction they went with it. And I went into this movie having nothing but the highest of expectations and I loved it, but the plot just is thicker with It Follows. It's more interesting. It's more metaphorical. Um, There's just, yeah, it was way stronger in It Follows. Awesome. Okay, so... I uh, I just noticed my lighting. I look like a ghost. Um, I'm not going to break uh, break the trend here. I'm going to go with it follows. It's uh, um, it was clever. It was very you know it was a, a safe sex video if you want to go that route. <laughs> um, you know it's um, it was different to see it. I it was one of those films that uh, I didn't know anything about it when I saw it actually, um, which is always kind of cool. But usually, even if you don't know something about a film, it just plays out in a standard format. This one was different. It was, and, and because it was so different, uh, I really got into it. And, um, and, and I thought, yeah, the story was very cleverly crafted. And, uh, um, and it's not to say that X is terrible, but we've seen X, you know, a million times in different kind of uh, uh, formats. So it's going to be an it follows sweep across the board. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to setting. So the setting of these two films. And uh, we're going to start off with Anya. I'm giving X the setting. The aesthetics in this movie just checked off so many boxes for me. I am a, such a grindhouse lover. You know, it's a beautiful homage to the Texas Chainsaw, even though it wasn't filmed there. Um, But even down to the detail of the styling and the fashion and the music and the, you know, just everything, everything about this movie and the setting was visually so beautiful. It Follows was great. And I liked that you didn't quite know what era this was supposed to be in. At first, I thought it was the 80s and I thought it was the 90s, but then they've got current cell phones. So it's kind of all over the map. But I felt just a little bit more connected with X. And there's sex in it. How do you how do you say no to 70s style grindhouse porn sex? You can't you can't say no. 
I haven't yet. So yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. John, what do you what do you say? How do you follow that? Um, yeah, I can't follow 70s grindhouse sex, but I would agree that uh, <laughs> X has, I think, the better setting. I think the setting of X is almost the plot. I mean, it, the where it takes place and when it takes place, I think, is more important than the actual sequence of events. Um, and I love it follows, but I think if I have a frustration, it's in that it is so kind of distractingly vague about where and when things are happening. Not that it all has to be pinned down, but I didn't feel like they paid a lot of attention to that, which I feel like for something that thematic, I, where I would have appreciated it even more if they would have. I think they did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, so do I, but it just, I just don't think it worked as well for me in that, in that yeah. as that, it relates to that element of it. I liked, I liked that they did that though, because the ending has no clear defined ending mm -hmm. either. So everything about It Follows was non-defined and non-descript and open to interpretation. And that just pisses John off. Obviously, yeah, I can that's, tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's. Uh... I need to know the date this movie. Yeah. <laughs> what year is the cell phone released? <laughs> yeah, yeah, flip phone is it? Yeah. Um, well, I got. You know, it's funny. We're gonna. We started off with uh, in agreement with uh, the first category, and we're all agreeing on the second category. Um, uh, unlike John, it doesn't piss me off to no end where I can't lose <laughs> sleep that uh, it follows, doesn't have a defined area. Uh, but I do agree with you, John. I do. Like, I know, and, and I agree that it was intentional. Um, but it just, it, it kind of moves all over. They're by a lake all of a sudden. They're like, you know what I mean? And it's just like, it's kind of hard to pin down. I understand it, but it's, you know, uh, whereas you know, X is in my wheelhouse. It's, it's, it's Texas. It's like, you know, it's seventies and you know, it's um, it doesn't for me get any better than that. Maybe if it's in a cabin in a woods, it might be a little bit more, but uh, definitely the setting I thought X was uh, um, was a little bit more compact and I like that. So, so X takes a clean sweep to even things up. Usually I don't add as we go along, but it's pretty easy with the, the way we're going. So let's, let's see if we can differ on some opinions here. Filmmaking, and I'm going to throw it to John. Uh, for directing, this was actually a tough, probably the toughest one for me because it's two very stylized movies, but very differently stylized. I did go with It Follows um, just because it is so stylized and all just the shots of the people walking methodically towards anybody or just kind of walking towards the camera it got to the point where you're just not trusting anybody you saw in the background of that movie um so that's where i kind of gave it the edge again whereas x is great but again to me it's a very straightforward sort of slasher in terms of the way it's shot <coughs> excuse me anya you're up I, I, i'm in agreement and it feels like we're all going to be kind of in, <laughs> in agreement most of this way but um you know, what, what I liked about It Follows is I was the same as you, Jason. I went into it not really knowing very much about it. And I should have gone into X maybe not really watching a lot of the previews because mm -hmm. that does kind of deter your your opinions, your preconceived notions of what's going to happen. F X um, got major hype though. Like, I mean, just to, I mean. Yes, it, I whereas... did, I, it was unavoidable. I know, yeah, I know. Yeah. So give yourself And I mean, break. that was maybe... That was a little bit to their detriment, I, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and and the ambiguousness of It Follows suddenly dropping goes hand in hand with this movie. And it goes, there's nothing about that movie that is very specific to the director or to any particular um, thing that we've seen before. And like you said, X is completely taken from things that, you know, we've seen and experienced before. So fil for filmmaking, 100% It Follows. I, um, I, I, yeah, I kind of struggled with this one because even though we've seen it before in X and we've, we, you know, we grow accustomed to it. I don't want to write off a film always for, you know, following a formula that I love so much. And, you know, I feel like X, you know, really strongly, um, came through with, with a lot, like I have a lot of love for it. Um, but as far as, 
filmmaking. Uh, it follows added something that was very unique for its time. It was slow paced and, you know, and you don't see that very often. And the argument is that audiences can't handle it. And I, I think the popularity of it follows proves that it can, you know, you just have to be able to tell a story and, and that's what this movie is. It's, it's a ride. It's like a story. It just, it kind of, you know, all bleeds into the next scene and, and, I, I really enjoy I thought it was um, it wasn't overshot and uh, at times it looked typical at times it looked you know artsy um, but not to the detriment of the film it didn't you know try to be something it wasn't um, but for pacing wise it was a unique pacing that you don't I would say you don't see much now but you don't even really see that in, in general too much in a horror film um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna really give uh, the nod to it follows um and i hate like i said i hate bashing a film for following a formula that i love but it's not so much bashing it's just it follows rose to a different level all right so we're gonna move on to acting and characters so in the past i've had separate categories for the both but i found that it was kind of getting muddied the waters with uh, everybody's explanation. So we're going to basically break down the acting and the characters at the end. You just give one mark though. Um, and uh, we're going to start with, uh, well, we'll start with me this time. Um, I haven't gone first yet. So I'll put some pressure on you. Uh, I'm going to, this one's tough because it follows, I thought was a really well acted film. Um, there was no, uh no real blunders in it um there was no weak performances um so i'm kind of gonna just keep that simple and 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 i'm gonna also actually agree that i would say well actually i'm gonna leave x for a second but what i do have a problem with it follows was this movie is like really uh intense and the the premise is very it could get to you and it's like what would you do and and i found that there was just too many people, too many casts around the central figure. I didn't even know who some of them were. Uh, <laughs> you know, like I, I really didn't. I had to give it a, a second watch to see, you know, who are all these people? Obviously, you know, you know, the, the, the love interest and stuff like that. That's pretty self-explanatory, the crush. But um, I just thought that there was too many extra people in, you know, and it took away from the urgency sometimes um flip to x and i'm talking I, I don't know my answer so i'm talking it out here <laughs> so flip to x i really uh i thought it was well acted and i thought the characters were exciting and again you know porn 70s you know farm it all awesome perfect setting for these characters to kind of rise i did not um uh i did not care for mia goth as pearl as the old I it took me right out of it and I know she gets a lot of love for the portrayal but I don't know whether it was the makeup it looked like makeup and in this day and age I don't know to me that's unacceptable um but I was just like you know because old people freak me out and it it <laughs> follows <laughs> no <laughs> in horror films <laughs> in horror films like that old lady in it follows was where I was like, oh okay, my God. I'm watching a movie here. Like I'm, I'm into this. This is freaky. That woman scared the hell out of me. Where is you look at X every time, every single time she was on screen, I was out of it. I was like, you know, she's wearing makeup and, and it, and it really drove me nuts because I don't know why, I don't know why they, you know, they could have just, you know, cast an old lady to play Pearl, but, um, so I'm going to give it to It Follows. Actually, I was going to give it to X, but because uh, uh, that character takes me out of it. The other characters are annoying to be there, but the one character takes me out of it. I'm going to give it to It Follows. Sorry for the long answer. We're going to go to Anya. <laughs> I don't even know how to follow that. I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. It's okay. I I agree with you about the characters um, in acting in It Follows the the jump scares and the old people and, and suddenly having a random person walking down you know with these weird expressions on their faces it th those characters were awesome but I'm the same as you I got too 
um, confused by all of the bevy mm-hmm. of characters are coming and going. A lot of them actually kind of look similar. Yeah. And at times <laughs> it it took me two watches to understand that the the guy, are we, can I say spoilers? Oh yeah. She, yeah. Okay. Um, the guy that she ends up having sex with the first time and the guy she ends up having sex with the second time are actually different men. <laughs> I honestly thought it was the same guy, the first watch. Yeah. So that, that confused me a little bit. Um, and so what I tried to do when I was watching these two movies for this category, especially because I'm a creator myself and mm-hmm. I'm an actor and I'm a model, I tried to put myself into the mind frame of watching both of the films and kind of taking from, you know, the the intricacies of what they had to play. And I am going to give it to X. I agree with you that the old lady Pearl sucked. I'm sorry, that everything about her it, it she wasn't interesting I don't know I'm agree, agreeing with you I don't know why they had Mia Goth playing both characters mm-hmm. that was very strange and the makeup wasn't good and they also added makeup to her husband that made him look weird mm-hmm. and I agree with you it totally took me out of it but her ability to be able to do the duality of that while you're filming and you have to bounce around from character to character Mm -hmm. and maintain composure and still do your scenes is really difficult. So her ability to do that and also watching Kid Cudi play that performance as well as he did, Mm -hmm. that was shocking. I didn't think Kid Cudi would be able to actually (laughs) kind of, it it looked really natural for him. And, you know, the combination of those two and then even Britney Snow Mm -hmm. just nailed the country bumpkin kind of stereotype, but she did it in a way where she was super endearing. And I just felt overall, I didn't necessarily love all the characters as much from X, but the acting and the performances, I thought were a lot more superior than It Follows, unfortunately. All right, John, tiebreaker time. All right, I'm going to give this one to, I'm going to pause dramatically since I'm breaking the tie. Um, I went with X for acting and character. Um, I I think it's a little bit maybe even unfair because I think X is very X is very specifically written to kind of be an actor's showcase. I mean, the, it's very much written for actors to kind of do, show off a little bit. All the characters are all a little bit quirky. They're kind of mm-hmm. really well, they're very well defined. They're very specific. They're all a little bit showy. You know, there's not, no one's subtly playing anything in X. They're <laughs> no. cast, you know, the, they, they are very well known and specific actors doing very cool things. Mm-hmm. You know, Jenna Ortega, who's kind of in every horror movie now, you know, she kind of is, all of a sudden is a big presence in a movie like this. Britney Snow is very well known. Mm-hmm. She's a big presence. Um, so I think that carried it, whereas it follows again, the characters are at best vaguely drawn. Even mm-hmm. the protagonist, we don't know a whole lot about her. and We don't necessarily sympathize or even relate specifically to her. She's just kind of going through this situation, but we don't really get a lot about her specifically. Um, again, I think it's more about the writing, but um, I do think for acting and character, I think X wanted to be an actor's kind of playpen, and I think that's why it works a little bit better for this. Awesome. All right. So we're going to move on to Scare Factor and which film scared you more. And we're going to start with the man we just heard from, John. Um, it follows. Um, I think it's, again, it was just so unnerving and kind of frustrating. Again, like I said, you you didn't trust anybody in the background of that movie the longer it went on. It had those surprising appearances, you know, through the doorway, the little kid coming through the, the pet door, which was kind of terrifying. But it wasn't your typical jump scare, even though it was kind of out of nowhere. Um, X, I, I enjoy X, but it didn't scare me in the slightest. I mean, it's it's just not frightening. Like nothing about that scenario or even seeing the characters in peril. Like it, it didn't frighten me in any way. Whereas It Follows was kind of, you know, played with my mind a lot. Anya Gore. <laughs> I threw you. <laughs> you did. You did. I was expecting that. Right. It's okay. It's okay. Um, I was. It's interesting when you say scare factor because it, that can be so open mm-hmm. to so many different people. And I kind of went into it thinking, okay, what what would be a scare factor for me personally? And uh, yeah, it follows. 
it actually got me to jump in the theater. I jumped once or twice and I don't do that very often because I watch so many horror movies. So right there, I was like, okay, I'm in love with this movie. If you can get me to jump, I am hundred percent on board with this. But then number two, the idea of that actually happening is fucking terrifying. And then you just never know, like the lingering anxiety that you potentially could feel from this thing. Like if if the person behind me dies, it's coming back after me. Mm -hmm. You, you never know. You just never know. Whereas with X, I found that most people would watch that movie and think, okay, this happened in a different era that I'm not really a part of. And like, what is the likelihood that I'm ever going to be in a situation like that? So it's harder to put yourself into that mindset of feeling a lot of fear. And I found the jump scares in that one were way more predictable. Yeah. (coughs) Excuse me. Um, So you're going with it follows, correct? Yes. All right. So um, I agree. I I know with... um with X that um, it, it, it's a slasher. I mean, let's be honest. And I, I don't know if a slasher has ever scared me. Maybe when I first started getting into them, I love them to death. Um, whereas it follows just messed with me right from the get go. Again, I guess I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what, but um, you know, that opening sequence with the guy looking over his shoulder, the theater and stuff like that got me my guard up. Like, you know, um the old lady but it was really when they were in the um in the house and then i think there's someone that came in the kitchen or something like that yeah. at that point I, I was like you know alone in the dark and stuff like that i was like i don't get scared very easily so it was like whoa this is this is freaking me out a little bit um and that doesn't happen often and it continued for most of the film. I thought it was really, really intense. And like you said, Anya, the 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 thought behind this being a reality is pretty terrifying. And um, you know, and that's why I never have sex. So, but anyways, <laughs> that's keeping me clear. But I worry about everybody else who's normal out there. So, but I'm gonna give it to it follows. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on to kills and uh, I'm going to start on this one. Uh, It's hmm. this is tough because there wasn't really many and it follows. Um, But, you know, that that first one was pretty uh, visually uh, iconic (laughs) already. Um, and uh and then there's the boyfriend which was very disturbing so there 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 there's i think only two but at the same time they were really intense to the point where they they hit you know they hit you um the poor girl like running like and then you know um whereas x you know typical slasher but i really hated the kills in x (laughs) i mean getting eaten by an alligator in a slasher film um a lot of shotgun blasts i'm not a big fan of that in a slasher like you know i I, i'm not a fan of it at all and uh and i think i'm trying to think of all of the the deaths but i i really uh i was really pissed off i hate i hate when slasher movies have horrible death scenes and uh and by horrible i mean off camera or you know Mm -hmm. just you know quirky or something like that so out of spite i'm giving this to follows anya you're up (laughs) (laughs) i like like your out of spite rating um that i I agree with you this was hard because um i agree the x kills sucked they were really disappointing Mm -hmm. um and the it follows yeah i i think there's three that i can think of but one of them is again ambiguous it's when the thing at the end gets shot and you see all Mm -hmm. this fate this blood and you don't know exactly did something really die did she only see that you just don't know um but i have to give it to x because i am going just on solely blood count okay (laughs) I when I'm watching a movie I I don't necessarily enjoy a lot of gore like I'm not a torture gore person but if I get to see lots of blood splatter blood flying around people running down the street with blood dripping in their eyes and in their mouths you know blood going on the highlight beam of a car as it's happening 
-hmm. you know, that that's satisfying for me. So between the two, I'm giving it to X for the blood. All right. Before I throw to you, John, uh, I just want you to remember what she said, how she's not a fan of like all out gore. And then I'll send you the link to her Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, so aware, I'm, I'm aware of the irony. I can create it. I can 100% create it. I can't, I'm, I can't, I'm, don't even think I'm going to be able to see Terrifier 2. Because <laughs> I'll I've send you told... the link. And you, I'll send you the link. <laughs> All right, John. All right. So I went, I had the same sort of moral conflict that you guys had about this one, where what you guys said, it follows doesn't have a lot of kills, whereas X, that's what they're the movie's there for. Mm -hmm. But I went with it follows because there's only two kills, but they're horrifying moments in that movie. They are they define huge sequences of that movie. That first kill with that poor girl. Mm -hmm puts you in a very bad state of mind uh, to figure out what's going to happen next. The one kid, you know, getting dry humped by his mother is a very <laughs> unnerving and grotesque kind of visual. We've all been and there, I agreed the kills at X were not good. In a movie like that, it pretty much only exists to have those kills. It's like yeah. they should be just barn burners. You know, guy gets a pitchfork. We, we've seen that a million times. It's not done particularly stylishly. Mm -hmm. I uh, I enjoyed X more the first half before they started killing anybody than mm -hmm. I did once they started killing people. But I was like, oh, it's just going to be this kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it it follows doesn't have many kills, but I think they again they define the movie in a way that makes it better than it would be if they if they were different. John, like you, I enjoyed the first half of the movie with all the nudity as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we 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 have a visitor. I'm so sorry. He's walking. Around. He's very loud, so I wasn't oh. sure if you could hear him in the background. But no, this no, is no. this is my big giant cat who won't shut the fuck up sometimes. No, we can't hear it. We can't hear. It. What's the name? Oh, you can't hear it. Okay. Oh, his name's Humpty. Humpty. <laughs> awesome. Nice meeting, Humpty. Um. So before I move on to the next category, um. Do you, so you you all agree that X's kills were because i thought i was the only one like it, I, i'm like mm -mm. I, maybe i don't know what i want anymore <laughs> i'm expecting too much but it's kind of interesting to hear you know you kind of uh, echo the same sentiment but i felt with x the the problem was they put the focus on the story of of pearl too much and mm -hmm. i think most people did not go into that story wanting to hear us you know yeah it, it it failed and so when you're watching this you then expect the kills to be really good but yeah they're limited exactly and predictable <laughs> and that's that's to your point john that's the first the first half really isn't the pearl story right like i mean it's mm -hmm. it's a creepy old lady maybe here and there but you know it's the second half where that becomes the you know the prevalent storyline and uh yeah um i think i was know? expecting a more interesting reveal as to what was going on other than it's just the old people in the house that we've already seen that they can yeah. just you know yeah i agree it was such a letdown when that moment came you're like oh that's what this whole thing was for. yeah 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 i agree i agree that's you're why right. i'm not running out to see pearl personally i'm gonna wait yeah then there's a, the trilogy right there's th yeah, two more Maxine, coming out, right? yeah. so i will say not to get ahead of us but i thought pearl was absolutely brilliant oh okay okay but noted All right well you seem to share the same opinion of x as i do so maybe uh Maybe Especially if you just love movies and it doesn't have to be 100% a horror movie every second of the way. Yeah, yeah. All right. So they, they went for their Godfather part two. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see when Godfather three comes out in that series. All right. So we move on to the antagonist. And uh, we've kind of hinted here and there to uh, to this throughout. It's kind of interesting with It Follows. So we're going to throw to Anya first. I'm going with It Follows. The antagonist in this one just was far superior than anything in X. I don't really know what more to say. It was scary mm -hmm. and ominous. And it being ominous almost makes it scarier. And like we've talked about the reveal in X was kind of like. Mur, mur, mur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice and short and sweet. I'm going to keep it sweet too. I'm going to agree. And uh, uh, 
yeah, it was just nothing like we had ever seen. So got to give it to that. But John, you don't have to agree with us. What do you have to say? I am going to agree with you guys about It Follows. But again, I will say Pearl is a phenomenally more interesting character in her prequel. And I recommend you guys watch it. John is the executive producer of Pearl. I am. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. He's not. But uh, but anyways, okay. So we're on to the last category. Uh, and uh, it's, of course, it's the, the ending, the make or break of most movies. And I'm going to start it with John. Yeah, um, I went with It Follows. Um, that's the kind of movie that kind of requires... An, ambig amb an ambiguous ending i think it's the perfect ambiguous ending where again you don't know where these characters even are they don't have any more of a sense of what happened than we do um and the only kind of closure they kind of have is each other which i think is a really uh, great ending and again x is a slasher movie that just kind of comes to an end when everybody is dead that's supposed to be all right I'm good and bad yeah. <laughs> Anya Gore, you're up. I agree. The ending of It Follows was way better than X. X just ended very predictably and it made it didn't make me want to see anything else. Um, and I also knew that, you know, there was going to be Pearl. Mm -hmm. But anything, in my opinion, that ends that doesn't have, it's a circle, it's a loop. It doesn't mm -hmm. end and have a final hard moment of end. It, it's way more appealing for me. It makes me want to go back and watch because it makes me feel like I've missed things. And then it makes me think about it and want to discuss it. And that's why I love this movie. I've watched this movie so many times because I, I'm always looking for what did I miss before? And, you know, it's got it. There's got to have been something that mm -hmm. loops and ties back. And I just, yeah, way better ending. <laughs> I, um, so, uh, yeah, I agree with X. Uh, pre predictable, <coughs> excuse me, predictable. Um, and uh, actually, maybe not predictable because we were all expecting something better to happen. <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> maybe it wasn't predictable, but it was uh, typical. How's that? And uh, and again, the whole old person thing, which I again, I, I love old people in horror films. They creep me out, but. I, it just it I, I was out of it and um with it follows it's interesting so that last scene uh was brilliant I thought it was just unbelievable like you know you kind of feel like you you bought some time you're out of the woods and then you know that person in the sidewalk is just you know reminds you of where you are and it leaves you so gutted and just like just full of despair but if we're going to go further back, that whole climax, the swimming pool, I didn't like it at all. I, I didn't like it. I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't like, you know, there were some creepy, um, I guess what we call them zombies or like, you know, throughout the film, like, you know, the, the big tall guy, the old lady, which we kind of talked about. And then the guy in the very end just kind of didn't do it for me. He was just, you know, white t-shirt guy. And um, Looked like you know just a plumber and uh i was like i thought they could have done a little bit better with the climax of that film i did not like the way they brought that because I, I was wondering how are they going to fi finish this how is this going to end and then when that happened i was like okay so they didn't know either um but maybe you know it was just to set up the very ending but anya do you disagree you kind of look like you're disagreeing with me no well i mean yes i disagree okay <laughs> but i know i know there was a lot of hate for that scene and i get it um because i didn't like it either the first time i watched it but then after i've watched it several times one of the key things and um, it made me kind of fall in love with this movie even more was they don't really spell everything out for you mm -hmm. so you have to figure all of this out on your own and one of the key things they do all throughout the film is everybody just ends up knowing to gravitate towards water every one of them that is being followed and it's interesting that they chose water as a theme um, because it water is never ending as well and so is this thing that's following them so i liked that they put that metaphor with having this thing quote unquote die and nobody around her can see what she sees mm -hmm. and so they are all just having to to 
take basically what she's saying at face value. And that also shows, you know, this large level of trust these kids have. And then she's also potentially about to be electrocuted because this thing is whipping these electronics in there Mm -hmm. and the the intention was for them to get it. And the more I've watched that scene over and over, the more I'm actually glad that that's what they did because it was unusual. That's not usually a way that they kill a spirit or a Mm -hmm. ghost or, you know, it was, I feel like a little bit more authentic to what a group of teenagers might come up with trying to get this thing to end. All right. Well, I'm glad I asked you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a it's a very good point. But isn't this and now correct me if I'm off on this, and I want both your opinions. Isn't this an example of where there's just too many people? Like, wouldn't it have been a lot creepier if at that point there was just like maybe her and one other person around, like instead of like a team? Um, or is that just me? I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, yeah, it might have been creepier, but it wouldn't have also set the realistic tone of this group of kids being followed, right? Like, I don't think that they, if she, if she was alone with one or two other people, that it, she would have survived. Mm -hmm. I think she needed this group of these, because they're all quite young. I mean, they're Mm -hmm. barely driving. They're 16, maybe 17. And how they're all coming up with some way to beat this thing is huge. And I just don't think it would like one of the the reasons I think this this movie hit home with so many people is because it felt legitimate. And I think that's again like that's the sort of thing that would have actually happened if it if I was with the group of my girlfriends and I was getting attacked, I'd be with the group of my girlfriends as we're trying to take this thing down. Well, John, do you agree with her and her logical and well thought out explanation, or do you agree with me <laughs> and uh my dumbass point of view? Um <laughs> Sort of both. Um, I was equally frustrated with the water scene, and I don't completely like the writer director's argument that it was supposed to be a bad idea because it's like, well, you're, it's supposed to work. Um, so in some capacity, it's supposed to be as a story function. It's supposed to have a more specific purpose. That just mm-hmm. felt like, well, it was supposed to not make any sense and not help. I was like, well, that's not really. You've come this far resolving. With- the, the story and theme that you've set up yeah. as well as it probably needs to. Um, am I wrong or did I make this up? Is the final form of the creature her father? Did I make that up? I remember hearing that. Yeah, I I thought that, but as you were saying that you look like some plumber, <laughs> I realized, you know, you don't actually know. I don't think they've really built that storyline up and I kind of wish they had a little bit but they're also trying to be really unobvious and not spell things out for you so I like that they kind of left that open but it's weird John I did hear that so I don't know where I have no idea where but um that that is interesting and and also I never heard about the backlash of that swimming pool scene I thought it again uh, yeah I did I thought it was just uh people hated that scene (laughs) yeah I kind of more as time's gone on but at first I was like (laughs) what happened there but, uh, I, I did a bit, a bit of a d- dig deep into that one because I, I love this movie so much yeah. and um, it's in my top 10 and I wanted to understand the complexity of the metaphor because a lot of a lot of metaphors go over my head in these movies mm-hmm. and yeah like they were saying that that the water and and the fact that it is never ending and it will never stop and it will continuously evolve and find a way to persevere was sort of you know, the way that they wanted to end it, but it also represents it. So we have a winner and uh, this was not close. I thought it was going to be closer. (laughs) I really did. Um, But I guess it depends on who populates the panel. And uh, it was 18 to six for It Follows. It tripled up probably the most lopsided score I've had on, uh, on this show um again like i said i thought it was gonna be closer but um but i was surprised because it's kind of felt like i i felt like the one person who was missing something that everybody else was seeing in x because it just, it just has a, a lot of great buzz and a lot of people whose opinions i really respect really like it but i just i just it just didn't keep going for me like so i love the first half but yeah. they started the part that in theory i should be there for i it just kind of lost a lot of its energy for me yeah I, I agree too. Uh, I wanted to like it. I love the marketing, love the time set, 
that looked great and everything. Um, so I, I was ready to love it. Um, but I liked it. So not the worst. But I think Anya Gore is extremely happy because a film that's in her top 10 <laughs> wins Horror Face Off. So Woo-hoo. congrats to you. And, uh, and I'd like to thank uh, both of you for coming back on the show, John, and for meeting you, Anya. It was uh, awesome. And hopefully we'll see more of you on the show. Mm-hmm. But for now, that's about it for Horror Face Off. It Follows versus X. We'll see you soon. Shh. <sighs>